So today we're going to take a look at how to recreate the synth tone from Everything in Its Right Place by Radiohead from scratch. Here's what it sounds like. So I'm using a synth called Vital for this, but you can make this on pretty much any polyphonic synth. Um, this synth is also free and I would highly recommend picking it up. It's made by a person named Matt Titel and it's extremely powerful. I, I would really put it up against something like Serum or anything like that. Um, if you do get it, please consider getting one of the paid tiers as the synth is totally worth it and it's made by one developer. Um, it's definitely, one of my main synths now. Anyways, I always thought this was a Rhodes, um, but it's actually a polyphonic synth called the Prophet 5, which I thought was super interesting. So I did a little research on how to recreate this, and it's definitely different than I thought. It's definitely a little simpler than I thought, um, but I made a few changes based on just what, what I was hearing to kind of get the sound that I just thought matched the best. Um, but I'll link the resource below that I use to figure this out. So I'm going to assume that you know at least like the basics of synthesis for this video, but if even if you don't and you're just getting into it, um, you should be able to follow along with what I'm doing and I'll, I'll try to go slow, but uh, no promises, I guess. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is just initialize the patch, which will give you just a basic saw tone, which sounds like that. And then the next thing we're going to do is change the oscillator to a pulse width wave, which I thought was really cool that this patch is just a pulse width wave. And all you got to do is just take the shape down and it's going to kind of sound like a little chip tuny. But when you apply the filter to it, it starts to kind of take shape. So I'm going to engage the filter. I'm going to turn the resonance down a little bit, and then I'm going to choose the dirty 24 dB filter. I feel like this one adds a lot of extra harmonics that I really like and I feel sounds more like the original. The next thing we're going to want to do is set our envelope shape for our first envelope. And all I'm going to do is basically just set the release a little longer, maybe take the sustain down a bit. And I would recommend not turning it too long because when you do, you'll kind of get some notes that clash with each other as they ring out. Uh, I'm going to play. Uh, the MIDI that I have here, and we can see how it's sounding so far. Cool, so you can kind of hear it's starting to take shape. I'm gonna also transpose it down an octave, and then the next thing we need to do is set our envelope to, set that shape similar to the first one, and this one's gonna control the filter. So I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna drag it onto the filter, And then I'm going to lower the intensity a bit so it doesn't open too high. And what this is doing is basically when a key is played, it's going to treat it like an oscillator, except it's going to open the filter instead. Um, so you'll kind of see this start bouncing. And then also you're going to want to turn your key tracking all the way up. And then you can lower the filter quite a bit. And I'll play. And this is really going to start to take shape here. Adjust the filter down. So that's sounding pretty good. The next thing I did to kind of emulate this is actually make another oscillator and just copy the settings over from the first one. And that's because the original recording sounds like it was double tracked and panned hard left and right. So I wanted to recreate that effect in, in the patch. So I'm going to set these the same so that they don't have any weird phasing. I'm going to pan this one left and then this one right. And then I'm going to set this to filter one, and then we can kind of hear what that sounds like. Move it down a bit. So it's really kind of just taking up the stereo field now, which I really like. Uh, the next thing I did was kind of add a little LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator, to control the fine tune of the pitch because. In the original song, it's you got this like really cool, like almost like tape kind of warbling, like sounds like it was recorded on some cool 
a uh, very expensive piece of vintage gear, which it probably was. I'm gonna set the envelope to a sine wave. I'm gonna bring the intensity down a little bit, and then I'm gonna set the mode to sync, just so that it's not triggering every time a key is played, and it'll just go freely. And then I'm gonna set the frequency to seconds, and then I'm gonna turn that up a bit. This you'll kind of do to taste as well. Uh, and then take your LFO and drag it on to the fine tune of the pitch. And then we kind of bring down the intensity. Just, just a subtle effect is really all you want. If you go too much, you'll see it's gonna be, I'll set it too much and you can kind of see why you don't want to do that. I think that sounds kind of cool, but it's a little much. So pull this down. You just kind of get a bit of a warbling going on. So that's pretty much that's pretty much the main like sound that we're going for. It's a very simple patch to put together. The next part is the effects, and the compression kind of plays a huge role here. So I'll start with that. I'm kind of new to Vital, so I'm assuming this is threshold, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly like what these settings are. <laughs> but I'm gonna set it to single band, and I'm gonna just kind of bring the threshold down a little bit. I'm gonna turn the attack up a little bit to keep the initial transient and set a nice long release. And we'll see how this sounds. So you can see there's like an extra like, or you can hear there's an extra kind of like clickiness going on. That is really present in the song, which I didn't really realize until I critically listened to it for this uh, for this video and I really like it, it sounds really cool. Um, and the next thing I did was add a bit of a distortion to try to mimic the the Prophet's natural kind of saturated sound. Um, so I set that to a hard clip and turn the drive up a bit, mix all the way up, and I'm gonna set the cutoff up and the blend down and the resonance down and I need to engage this as post. Um, so this will just add some extra harmonics and I'll probably I'm gonna I'm gonna play it and then bring the drive up to a level where it's not like sounds like it's going through a distortion pedal or something. See so right there. So that's sounding pretty good. And then the last thing I did is add an EQ. And I do it before the compression because I'm I don't know, everybody gets upset about that, but that's okay. So uh, I'm just gonna roll off a little low end and let's do this. I wanna kinda bring up this like low mid and maybe a little less highs, but we'll see. Let's, let's listen. That's sounding pretty good to me and I mean that's basically that's basically it um, if you want you can set the mod wheel to the cutoff and the resonance so I'll take this and drag it onto these turn the intensity down a bit and there's a point at the end of the song where they kind of bring up the resonance and the filter so you can set that to your mod wheel And once you start to bring up the filter, you kind of hear the digitaliness of the synth, but that's just gonna happen with digital synths. Um, so let's hear it all in the mix. Oh, also the bass is actually just this same patch, uh, but just one oscillator and in mono, and it's just playing uh, bass notes. So let's hear it in a patch. that's that um, I'm gonna link this preset down in the description just so you can download it if you're not interested in designing it yourself no problem um, yeah so this is my first video um, we'll see if I make any more like this I just I got vital and I just felt inspired so um, yeah thanks for watching leave a comment if you have any questions and have a good one